Welcome everybody to Studio Z. I'm Pete and today we're going to be doing a full shop tour. It's a 2024 shop tour and before I do that I'm going to give you a little background about who I am and how long I've been in the industry and what got me here today. So I've been in the hardwood flooring industry for about 37 years. My father uh, had, a, had a flooring company and he taught me ever since I was really small uh, the whole uh, floor sanding, installing, and, uh, and finishing as well. Uh, I, I've picked up a lot of my carpentry skills from doing the hardwood floors. We did a lot of custom uh, inlays, a lot of custom borders, and um, fancy designs, parquets, which involved a lot of uh, detailed carpentry. And once I started with that, I just fell in love with it and really uh, grew into a passion of mine. I also uh, began at a young age watching a lot of PBS television and uh, came across uh, the New Yankee Workshop with Norm Abram. And I just fell in love with that show. I've watched every single episode and uh, learned a lot of how to build furniture from that show along with other skills that I already had in, in carpentry. Um, I also ran uh, for a while for the company that I worked for in hardwood flooring during the recession. I, I managed a hardwood wholesaling company so I also have a background in the lumber industry as well and selling woods and buying and stuff like that. So I, I understand a lot about, um, you know, lumber yards when I go purchase lumber, things like that, the grading, um, everything involved in all of, in, uh, in all of the lumber industry. Um, so it was a great asset for me to have for about five years um, while we were waiting for things to pick up. And I came back into the flooring industry and at that point, there wasn't as much work, so I started building custom furniture on the side to help pick up the slack between the two. And I've been doing, uh, building custom furniture now for about 10 years uh, out of my two-car garage in, uh, at my home. And this is a full-time business that I have here now, uh, so I, I no longer do the hardwood flooring, but, um, but I do build custom made-to-order furniture um, I don't do a lot of cabinets, it's just not my thing. I don't have the space for it as well. And so um, I make one-off pieces, mainly for decorators uh, and things like that. So um, the, the main concept of my shop and the main principle that I have to uh, abide by is that everything in my shop has to be mobile. I'm limited on space, so everything in here is designed to be moved around. Um, so that I don't have uh, you know, fixed things that might get in the way and, and uh, limit my space even further. If I'm building something large, I can always accommodate it just by shifting things around. The only piece that doesn't move in the shop is my build table or the table saw. It can be moved, but I generally don't move it around. It's, uh, it's the heart of the shop and everything is centered around it. So. Uh, let's start the shop tour at this point. I'll start in this corner of the shop and I will work my way around. We'll go through it that way as we go around and then ultimately I will show you the... I also have a spray booth set up in here uh, that I do a lot of... I do a lot of really high-end finishing and fancy finishes so I will show you how I get done. That'll be the last uh, part of the video. Okay, so in this corner I've got a storage cabinet that I keep a lot of my um, hand tools and other various uh, measuring. I have really precise measuring devices um, for to keep most of the tools um, exactly, uh, you know, perfect and, and cutting correctly. Uh, some stuff that I don't use that often. Um, I have my stereo, which I don't use as much as I used to, thanks to having a TV in here and YouTube. I keep some hammers, my pencils, uh, I have a branding iron for my, my logo as well. I like to keep that stored away so it doesn't get damaged. Uh, but it's mainly all planes, uh, spoke shave, uh, some chisels, 
and sharpening stones, things like that, that don't use, get used every day. I just keep them in here and, uh, you know, out of harm's way. Then below it, I've got my router table. This one is uh, set up, I'll talk about this in a second. So this one is set up with a Porter cable. It's got a three and a quarter horsepower motor as well. I built it. Uh, it's one of the common plans that you find on uh, YouTube today. There's a lot of guys that have copied this specific design and uh, it works great. Um, I don't use the router uh, table that often, but when I do, again, it's on wheels. It can be moved around, so uh, it's, it's very, you know, very easy to, uh, to work with. Underneath, I have uh, many of my hand routers. Um, there's multiple types of routers. I even have a mini trim router as well, a couple of jigs, some circle uh, jigs as well, and uh, just keeps, again, everything out of the way, nice and neat and uh, you know, easy to get to when you, when you need it. In some of the drawers, I just keep the wrenches, uh, whatever various tools to uh, adjust the, the, the top lift there for the router. This, uh, this router has a lift in it, so from the top, I can adjust the, the height extremely precisely from, from the top as well. It's very easy to use. Uh, I keep certain other uh, cabinet. These are some Blum cabinet uh, jigs as well. And I have a lot of, uh, I keep a lot of wood spacers for when I'm clamping in this draw because I don't want to mar the wood as I'm clamping it. So this is a decent draw for me to keep all of that kind of stuff, uh, again, in a nice orderly place. I have my one charger for all my batteries. Uh, it all uses the same battery, so I don't need multiple chargers. I just use it here. Uh, and it's uh, been a good place for it. I may eventually build a, uh, a kind of like a shelf system here for uh, future, if I get a shaper, I may have shaper bits here, but again, not sure about that, if that's gonna happen or not, but uh, could be a potential future uh, content there. Then we move on and I've got my, uh, my clamp rack, which is uh, pretty extensive. And I've got everything from a five foot, uh, we've got some less than five, some fours, threes, twos, all the way down to uh, single hand clamps that can you know, clamp up to two inches. These probably get used the most out of everything in the shop whenever I'm gluing something up. You can literally never have enough clamps. It is the one thing that every woodworker says. And believe it or not, I am still looking to get more of these and uh, and possibly more of the other ones there and a couple more of these. You can never have enough. It's the one thing that um, that every woodworker uh, needs. And if I ever have something that's like, I don't know, eight foot long and I need to clamp it, I came up with a way to, with the pipe clamps, I use couplers and you can take the ends off and you can combine a five foot with like a three foot or a four foot and you can make almost any length clamp that you, that you need for your project. It's been a really great uh, way to go and it also saves space because you don't need, you know, 10,000 different lengths of clamps. You can make whatever one you need uh, before you glue it up. Uh, moving on, we've got the, this I just featured in another video. Uh, it's my saw blade storage. Um, rack and this one was a godsend. Uh, I used to just hang my saw blades up on a hook here and it was really a pain whenever you're working on the table saw. I'd have to walk around to go get a blade and waste time and it just wasn't efficient. It didn't work. It didn't work good. So now I've put all my saw blades in one nice clean looking rack. I can easily pull them off and know exactly which one it is. They don't touch each other so they don't get damaged. I'm not chipping any teeth or anything like that. Um, I keep my 10 inch blades for the table saw there. I've got two 12s for my miter saw, which I'll talk about later. And I also keep my small uh, track saw blades here as well. That's just handy to have them all in one spot and you know, it, just easy to get to. I keep my throat plates here. I've got my dado and my miter plate as well. I keep my dado set. Uh, and I also have some push sticks that are throughout the, throughout the area near the table. So I always keep them within hand's reach so that they're easy to get to. I've got my 
miter gauge here, uh, the, the wrench for the saw, uh, combination square, and uh, clock. You always got to know what time it is. <laughs> and I, I keep my tape measures and stuff on the fence itself. It's just uh, an easy, quick way to get to everything. And everything's at your hands when, when you need them. So from there, I also gonna jump back to this, which I moved out of the way. This is just a simple little uh, compact chop saw that I had when I was doing floors. Believe it or not, I needed something that was uh, gonna be small enough to do like shoe moldings and little tiny trims that I always did in floors. And I, I came up with a custom bottom for it that has felt pads. So on a finished wood floor, I can slide it around and never mar any of the surfaces. And it's also cordless. So um, it's just a great little saw that's extremely accurate and, uh, and very handy and lightweight to just carry around. So I use it primarily, uh, something in here is a little too long and I don't feel like dragging out the big miter saw. I just pull this out and quickly, you know, chop and, and take care of it rather than, you know, moving a, a lot of stuff out of the way. So from there, um, I'll talk about my outfeed table. And my outfeed table is where I basically build everything in the shop. It's, it's uh, the foundation along with the table saw. I, uh, I built this and um, it's rock steady, dead flat, and just a great tool to, you know, foundation to build stuff on. There's a huge empty void under it. I used to keep a lot of wood storage under here. I had um, side guides on it that would hold up the wood, but there is an addition coming to the shop. Uh, about a week or two from now, I'll be getting a CNC router. A Shapoko 5 Pro is coming, and it's gonna be the four foot by four foot. So look for that. That's gonna be a series of videos on that alone. So in about two weeks, we should be getting that here in the shop. But moving on, I, I, I wanna focus on the real heart of the shop, which is my Powermatic. This is my table saw. Everything in the shop pretty much goes through this machine. It, it is the literal, um, you know, the heart of the shop. It's a three horsepower, 220, um, and it's just a fantastic machine. I've had it for about 10 years now, and I really, really love it. It's super precise and just a great machine all around. I, um, I did, however, just, I just found this recently. This is the bow um, fence guide as well. I changed out the one from uh, Powermatic and this thing is a game changer. I, I will probably do a review of this alone, but I, I, I am absolutely in love with this thing. It is dead straight. It has improved some of my cuts. I, I can't tell you immeasurably. This is the greatest single thing I've ever added to my table saw. Um, super accurate, super flat. You don't end up with like most of the other companies will have one of these tracks at the very bottom and they get in the way when you're trying to cut and, and reference whether or not your board is really tight up against the fence. This doesn't have it. You just have a nice open black blank space. It's just absolutely fantastic. I purely, uh, totally love this piece. So, uh, from there, uh, I will come around and I will talk about the other storage that I keep on the side of the table saw. I have on top, I have my uh, sled that I use for some cross cuts. I don't use it too often, but uh, when I do, it, it's a great piece to have. And inside of there, I also have um, another jig for tapering uh, table legs and things like that. So I keep them out of the way and just tucked underneath here. So when I do need them, I can just pull them right out. Uh, underneath, inside this cabinet, again, stuff that I don't really use too often. I have a sharpening machine for all my saw blades. I sharpen all of my saw blades and I keep a flat granite stone as well for my chisels. I sharpen all of my chisels on there. I keep some um, stray things that I don't really use much, like the old head that goes to my planer. Um, I didn't want to give it away. Uh, I, I, so I, I use it for some storage for some other stuff. But it's um, a great piece that, uh, again, trying to maximize every square inch of this place is the key thing that I, that I try to 
uh, follow constantly because space is limited in here and every square foot is really precious. So from there, uh, I'll move on to this other corner. I keep a lot of my measuring devices, straight edges um, as well here. I, I keep this from, this is for my track saw. I will also go into this. Uh, it is a great tool to use in combination with the track saw. Um, when I break down plywood, I use this specifically. And when you clamp it on there, you get dead 90 degree cuts. It is one of the most accurate things I have ever come across in woodworking. And I truly love uh, this piece. It has really changed the game for me as far as being able to cut plywood and get a, a true 90 degree uh, reference point to start from so that once I get it to the table saw, I know that it's perfect and it's just going to repeat those perfect 90 degree cuts. I have also a lot of my, uh, well, we don't really use air nailers as much as we used to anymore. I use a lot of cordless ones now. So the only thing I really use a lot is my pin nailer uh, and my drills. I, I, uh, that's really about it. It's just a storage place for a lot of drill bits, counter sinks, and, and nails as well. But again, I don't really use uh, the air tools as much as I used to as far as nailers is concerned. So this is kind of becoming obsolete for, for what it was originally created for. I keep some of my Craig jig stuff as well here. I, I do use uh, the Craig jig uh, quite often and uh, can't be in a shop without TV when you got those long days when you're doing uh, complicated glue ups or you know a complicated build. Uh, it's nice to have uh, TV in the background. It keeps, uh, keeps the nerves down and makes everything a lot more pleasant to work uh, as when, when, you're, when you're working. I have a little cabinet of nuts, bolts, and all kinds of uh, miscellaneous uh, things. I'm not going to show each one in you know, particular, but there's a lot of fittings in there for air, air as well. It's just a cool little, uh, little cabinet there to store all that kind of stuff. I got, again, my track saws is where I keep them. I also have, uh, this is for moving around my, um, my bandsaw. Uh, and here I have a small rack of all the screws and various uh, Craig jig screws as well. There's just a complete assortment there of all kinds and different lengths, pin nails and uh, uh, true necessity. I like having everything all in one spot. It's easy to find it and grab it and, and go. Um, I basically, I don't keep a, a crazy assortment. I really just keep most of the common sizes that I use uh, on a regular basis because if you get every possible one, you end up with a really huge thing, then you're only using pretty much always the same one. So it's kind of a waste of space and, and time. So I, I keep it condensed for that reason. Below that, I've got my lathe. I don't do a lot of turning. <laughs> um, I'd be honest, I probably used this machine twice. I love wood turning. It's just something for me. Um, I don't, I don't do a lot of it. And what we do, we build a lot of modern, I build a lot of modern furniture here and turnings just aren't a part of that. Uh, we, we don't, uh, I don't know. I just never found a use for it, but I have it cause I do enjoy, um, you know, trying to turn things and, and make stuff. Maybe eventually I'll get more into it, but for the time being, I really don't, uh, I don't use it much. Uh, in the drawers, I keep a lot of jigs for um, cabinets, for doorknob uh, jigs and things like that. More spacing blocks just for things that when you're trying to do glue ups and you don't want to damage the surface, there's all kinds of stuff that those are, are used for. Uh, and I also keep the uh, knife set for the turning. Uh, I keep those in there. It's a nice, good place for it, for various parts for the lathe as well. Below it, I keep some of the things that are constantly used in here. I got my track saw there, jigsaw, and my uh, domino, uh, Festool domino. That is probably the single greatest tool ever invented. It has changed the game for me. And uh, I use that constantly. I cannot talk highly, any more highly about that one single machine. Um, it is the greatest machine to have in woodworking as a Festool Domino. I have the XL 
So we, we do a lot of tables here and we, we use the larger domino. So that's why I use that. I had bought this mortar sir a long time ago before I got that. And right now it's pretty much just sitting around because I, I, I don't really use it anymore since I've gotten the domino. Uh, th this thing pretty much is, is just here if there's a rare occasion where I need it, but I, I haven't used this in a very long time. Um, but it, jet, it's a great tool. It was a great mortiser. Um, and next to it, I have my drill press. Um, nothing fancy, just uh, I made a custom top for it. I do a lot of the pocket holes for cabinet doors when, it, when I do have them and other precise drilling. Um, so it gets done on this great machine. Again, nothing, nothing fancy. And some of these draws, I keep uh, other uh, various tools that go to the mortiser, the, the drill press as well. I keep a lot of my um, uh, hand sh uh, shapers uh, and, and, and things like that for hand scraping. Uh, I don't use these that often. I, because of my flooring background, we use a lot of hand scrapers in flooring and I've mastered them. I, I, I can hand scrape stuff faster with them than I can with these. But if I have complex curves or things like that, I do turn to these uh, to do those rather than uh, my hand scrapers. I have uh, various vacuum parts and uh, fuses from the shop, just the miscellaneous stuff that, you know, uh, has no other place. So it's got a decent home there. Underneath there, I've got uh, a hand planer, which believe it or not, I use when I sculpt um, rounded parts and things like that. I deal with a lot of solid wood. So uh, this is a, a necessary tool to get fast removal of, of a lot of uh, wood out of the way when you know, uh, you're gonna be shaping it by hand. I've got my uh, reciprocating, uh, AKA the fine tool, but it's a, uh, this one's a, a rigid. An old drill, a corded drill, which I don't use, and then two flooring nailers for different um, flooring things. I'm probably going to sell those, but we'll see <laughs> what happens there. For now, they're just in storage. Uh, next to it, I've got my rigid oscillating uh, edge sander. A lot of people have this particular machine. I love it. It's uh, I probably use this on every single project to you know, grind off little pieces here and there to get something perfect and, and whatnot. It is, it is a, a tool that you pretty much can't live without. Uh, you'll, you'll use it every single, every single day on every single project. Uh, in this cabinet, again, just more miscellaneous, odd storage stuff. Um, I have parts that go to this as well. And I keep my hand scrapers in here from my flooring uh, ears and the blades that go along with it. And I use that for a lot for, for uh, scraping off glue once I've glued up parts. Underneath it, I also have another sander. This is a six inch uh, disc sander and a four inch by 36 belt. Um, I don't use this too often because I've got the rigid above it, but whenever I do have something, I don't know, that might require it, I, I use this as well. Um, I also have welders uh, in another shop that I have in my basement. And I do use this to grind my, um, my points for the, for the TIG welder as well. So that's kind of a dedicated machine in that sense. Um, moving on from there, we've got, I keep my router bits in a custom router case that I made for them. There's a whole assortment of everything from quarter inch to half inch shaft cabinet bits, door bits. I keep some of my Forstner bits in here as well. And, uh, and a lot of my edge shaping um, for, for templating and things like that. They're, uh, they're really handy to have them all in one spot and to easily be able to see them so that you, know, you, uh, you remember what you have without having to dig through 10 draws to go and find it. So this one's become really handy. I'm going to be modifying it as well, probably in this side to add all the new CNC router bits that are going to be coming. Uh, so stay tuned for that in some future videos. And if you don't want to miss any of those videos, please make sure to like and subscribe and to click the little button that I have in the lower uh, corner. It makes it easy for you guys to subscribe to keep seeing this content. If you like it, just follow along. So moving on from there as well, I now have the miter saw. Uh, this is a rigid, it's a 12 inch 
that uh, I, I, I use this primarily to just, believe it or not, rough cut material. In this shop, every single thing that I cut is cut on the table saw. Whatever kind of joint it is, uh, 90 degree, odd angle, it gets done on there. Unless for some reason it can't possibly fit, I'll use this. Um, but I really don't use it for anything other than just to you know, break down a board if it's got an odd end on it or something like that. Uh, that's what I, I really use it for. To me, it's not a, um, it's not a super precise machine like the, like the table saw is. And so that's what I use it for. Uh, I have underneath it, I have all of my edge banding. I keep them in, in one place pretty much so that they're easy to get to. I do a lot of edge banding on certain uh, pieces of furniture and keeps them all in one spot. I keep some of my carbide um, uh, tips for the, uh, for the planer. They're the extra teeth that go in. Uh, I also have in this straw my iron for the edge banding and some of my larger edge banding. I do a lot of uh, big, big size as well and some miscellaneous rulers and, and curved uh, guides as well. There's just, like I said, endless storage that you need. Underneath it is kind of uh, a little, little bit more edge banding, some uh, bags for the dust collection system, some hand saws, and then I keep all of my styrofoam for the track saw because we put, um, I put this down underneath it and when you put plywood on top of it, you can cut right into this stuff and not damage any of your, your build tables or anything like that. So it's, it's basically sacrificial foam that we use to cut on and just keeps it in a nice place. It's out of the way. Okay, so from there, I've got my Husky. Uh, this is a, a, a lifesaver. It's a 60 gallon, three, uh, almost four horsepower, 220 volt compressor. Again, I do a lot of spray finishes, so this is a necessity to, uh, to do any kind of spraying. And uh, I keep it traditional. I don't have one of the, uh, what do you call the new, um, the new sprayers that, that are out there, uh, turbines, I couldn't think of the word, but I, I keep it conventional. That's what most of my guns are, it's how I started. So I, I, I love it. This machine's, believe it or not, 10 years old and uh, it's still running like a champ, nothing wrong with it. So, okay, so let's now keep moving on. So here I have my uh, second build table. This is one of the first build tables that I made. It is, uh, it is all custom made by me. And I created a system on the top whereby I use the dogs and it simply slips in there. And I put this uh, metal piece there. And just, you know, by moving the dogs around, I can custom make it to any size to hold any kind of board. If I'm doing hand work on it or, uh, you know, sanding or something like that, I can, you know, easily uh, clamp the board down to any, any size that I need. Or if it's not being done that way, they simply go inside the jaws and, uh, and it just gets clamped that way. So this was a great tool that I made. Uh, you know, it's a really highly mobile cart that, uh, that is fantastic to build on. It's really heavy and really flat and sturdy. Uh, it's also the same height as my, my actual build table. So whenever I'm building something really heavy on top of this table and I can't pick it up, I just bring that cart uh, table right over to this edge and I can just slide it right onto it if I need to bring it into the spray booth to you know, start staining or finishing it. So that table's uh, become really, really handy as far as almost like a helper in the shop. When, when you're alone, it's kind of hard to move things around, but uh, this has been uh, a true godsend to me to help me uh, move things around. I keep my pencil sharpener underneath it. Gotta have a pen, old school pencil sharpener, you know? <laughs> it uh, that gets used on the daily. I sharpen uh, pencils constantly. And uh, in, in, underneath it, I have a lot of storage as well for a lot of finishing and sanding. Uh, I keep a lot of things for the uh, compressor, 
I have uh, special marking uh, markers for, for once things are finished. These are Japanese markers. They're incredible at touching up. I have all different colors of them. I keep some of my parts for my respirator, um, various um, lifting points to keep, you know, uh, the finish from getting marred, razors, uh, odds and ends and things like that. And then on this side, I keep some of my assortment of sandpaper. I use mainly six inch sanders, but I do have some of the five inch and I, I use a lot of it sometimes just for hand sanding as well. I keep some of the pieces for the oscillating sander as well in here. But um, again, just a good place to keep everything in one spot so that it's easy to get to uh, and easy to find as well. Underneath it, I keep uh, my, my little tiny job compressor. In, back in the days I did you know, some trim work and things like that, so I kept, uh, I kept that as well. I have my cordless, uh, circular saw my this is now my brad nailer so it's a it's a battery operated things fantastic easy to use you no know, need for air anymore and uh, works great some old flooring nails i keep on this side a lot of my old flooring nailers i still have them i don't know i'm partial to them i've had them for oh god i don't know 30 some odd years i have my electric uh, makita circular saw i use that for really big live edge boards when I get them raw and they're two, two and a you know, quarter inches thick, I, I cut it with this guy rather than anything else. They just don't have the power that, that this particular machine has. And then I have a floor, uh, framing nailer. Uh, I, I do all kinds of odds and ends for my own house, so um, I do have a framing nailer. And that's it for this, uh, for this particular build table. So in this corner of the shop, which is technically the spray booth, it's basically a storage area for the machinery when I'm not uh, exactly using it. I keep it in this, in this area of the shop. And then when I do my spraying and my finishing, everything gets moved out of here to a different part of the shop and it becomes a spray booth. Uh, I also have my, my lumber storage behind everything. That gets covered once I'm spraying and, uh, and, I, and I don't have any you know, overspray getting on the wood and, and things like that. But starting off here, I've got my two horsepower, uh, simple Harbor Freight uh, dust collector. This thing is fantastic. Again, everything's mobile. So I just move it around uh, wherever I need it. It's got a 20 foot hose that stretches out. I can get it to any machine in here. And it's super powerful suction. The only thing, as you can tell, uh, it does, I don't have the pleated air filter on top. I plan on maybe changing that over to it. The bag is, um, you know, letting stuff by a little bit in here. And uh, I'm, I'm going to eventually change that to the pleated air filter on top. And I think at that point, it'll be a fantastic machine. It'll keep the dust down uh, tremendously. Behind it, I just hang my bandsaw blades on a nail. I don't like to coil them up. They don't... Uh, I don't know, it's just something I don't like. It's dangerous when you're trying to uncoil them and uh, I don't like to bend the blades that much, so I do keep them there up on a nail. Next to it, uh, this is the window in the shop. Um, I've got it closed right now just because I didn't want the bright light uh, coming, coming through, but this is my exhaust fan for all of um, the spraying that I do. Most of the time I have a filter on it when I'm spraying so that you know uh, it's not going outside. But uh, it's something that I came up with and um, it's just a magnetic motor. There's no spark in it, no brushes, so nothing can ignite. Uh, I, do, I do shoot, again, conventional uh, lacquers in here, uh, pre-catalyzed lacquers, conversion varnishes, all that kind of highly, highly flammable stuff. So um, everything in here is engineered around no spark, nothing gets ignited. Um, it's worked fantastic for 10 years and uh, I get some really incredible finishes out of this out of this spray booth, which I again will demonstrate at the end. Next to it, I've got my Laguna bandsaw. This is a 14-inch bandsaw. It's a three horsepower. It was a limited edition for a certain period of time years ago. I, I bought this again. I think it's about 10 years old, maybe a little less than that. And um, this is a truly fantastic machine. Super powerful and really accurate. 
I use their Resaw King bands. I do a lot of my own veneers, so I make uh, my own veneers out of that blade. And um, it's just been uh, an incredible piece for me. I don't use it very often, but when I do, it's a lifesaver as well. It's one of those tools that you gotta have in a, in a, in a high production shop. Next to that, I've got my uh, 22 or can be 44 inch. It's an open-ended sander. And uh, this is, uh, I think it's a one and a half horsepower uh, sander. It's, it's got the sand smart technology in it. So it senses when you're passing the material to it, uh, through it too quickly, it'll slow it down so that it, it, it uh, doesn't uh, bog down. And this is a great machine. I have to say, I don't use this very often, but when I do use it, it is to save your life. And why I say that is because a lot of times um, you'll have something that has a complicated grain pattern or something like that and you cannot pass it through the planer because the planer will just destroy it. It'll rip it apart or whatever it is because of the way the grain is. And this machine will do it. It can, it can sand and plane, it, let's face it, it planes anything. And it's super precise. And the fact that it's open-ended, you know, you can sand things that are 44 inches wide uh, just by, um, you know, passing it through one way, spin it around, and then pass it back through. Uh, again, this is a fantastic machine to have. Um, I, I truly love it. It's also uh, on a cart as well and has m many, many storage uh, draws in it as well. I keep a lot of my uh, table saw parts that I don't really use too often in here. I like to keep all of my blade packages that they came in. I don't know why I'm a real stickler about tools. I, I keep all of the manuals and everything. Um, I'm really, really, really detailed like that. I keep some jigs, um, just, you know, stuff that I really don't use too often. Then below it, I got a lot of my spray stuff. Um, I mainly use my Anestiwata. This is my, uh, this is my clear gun. I use this for all my finishes. I love this thing more than anything. It's a fantastic gun unbelievable quality that comes out of that. Uh, I keep other various cheap, just simple HVLP guns. There's nothing fancy about any of these. I use them for uh, some colors that I, you know, sometimes I'll shoot colors. I used to do lacquers, like, you know, Italian lacquers kind of stuff, high, high polished, full finishes like a piano. Um, I don't really do those anymore. And so um, this is just my assortment of collection over the years of, uh, of spray stuff. Below that, I've got, uh, again, some more really super fine sandpapers that I used to use, some tack cloths and um, uh, masking paper and, and stuff like that. Just, again, odd storage for, for stuff that I don't really use every day. Below that, I've got a couple more machines. Um, I have polishers and uh, some other uh, attachments that go to other sanders, not used every day. These are kind of just a place to keep them when you do occasionally need them. Um, it's a good place to just stash everything. I don't do a lot of the polishing finishes anymore. It just became too, uh, too time consuming and uh, I kind of wanted to relieve that stress from my life. So I don't, I don't do those finishes. I do love them, but again, I, I don't do them as much anymore. Uh, behind all of that, I keep uh, some, of my, uh, some of my wood storage. I have all the plywood that I, I generally have cutoffs. I keep it underneath here. And all of the good faces are facing the wall. So what you're actually seeing is the back of the sheet. It's, it's not the, f the finished face. And I do that just to make sure that if anything happens or if something were to splatter or whatever uh, randomly, it's not gonna damage the finished side of the plywood. You're not gonna see it. Uh, above that, I have uh, a lot of my live edge stuff that are cutoffs. I use a lot of these cutoffs. I make cutting boards out of them for, for people. Uh, it, I don't ever like to throw them away. They have some really fantastic grain patterns to them. So this just became a really good place to keep them and they're out of the way. Above that, I keep most of my solid oak, the cutoffs from a lot of the tables that I build. Again, I use this stuff uh, for various parts or samples or you know whatever odds and ends. You can't throw this stuff away. It's just too valuable. 
And in connection to that, throughout the shop, I also have another, uh, I keep some ceiling racks with, again, various uh, odd longer pieces of solid material, uh, plywood that you know, has been already cut. It's just a, a way to, to store material and get it out of the way so that it's not on the floor and impeding the flow in the shop. Just another corner here. I keep a lot of walnut up here, uh, just odds and ends. It's also, I should mention, there's, a, there's an attic above this garage as well. And I keep my um, uh, moving uh, furniture carts. I, I, I use a lot for the tables and things. I have various size uh, dollies that, that I use uh, for furniture. Some specialized pieces as well uh, for, you know, like table legs so that I can move uh, the furniture around in the finishing process once it's been built. And that's just a great place to keep stuff, again, out of the way. And uh, it, it opens up the shop for me so there's no clutter and, and simpler to, to, uh, to move around. From there, uh, we move on to the, oh, I would probably say the, the, the third most used machine in the shop and that would be my planer. This is a Jet 15 inch planer. It's, it, it has been upgraded to the, um, the Shelix head. So it, it has a helical head in it and um, it's a three horsepower. I've had this as well. I bought this used from a friend of mine. I used to use years ago, uh, one of those lunchbox type planers and it just wasn't cutting it anymore. And this one has taken its place Honestly, I, I will probably in the coming years be upgrading to a 20 inch. I do need um, a wider planer. So this one has done me well for the many years that I've used it. I cannot say anything bad about it. It's just I'm getting into bigger stuff and it's not cutting it anymore. I need uh, something a little wider. But, uh, but I truly do love this machine. And again, it's on wheels so I can, I can roll it around just like everything else in here. And... Uh, and it's just easy to work with. From there, I've got uh, a little odds and ends storage spot, again, for more plywood. These are the shorter pieces. It's just to happen to be an, a little niche uh, that, I, that I, I use uh, to, to keep stuff. I, I use a lot of that small stuff for samples and things like that. They're too small, mostly for parts, but they're great for making samples. Next to that, I've got my tool chest. Uh, this is pretty self-explanatory. I just keep a lot of my hand tools in here. Um, I, I, all kinds of wrenches, screwdrivers, uh, you know, every, every kind of hand tool that you could possibly want. Um, I also, I work on cars as a hobby as well. I have a race car, so I keep a lot of the tools that go to that as well. Uh, this has just got a lot of um, drills and um, again, more precise um, instruments for measuring and just again mechanics tools a, a, a su endless supply of them throughout you never know when you, know, you could possibly need anything above that I have some router jigs that I use uh, these are for making uh, this particular one is for making circles and things like that so it's just an odd place that I use the shelf brackets to hold it up again keeps things out of the way and it's a uh, a great place to hold it. Uh, it's kind of a dual purpose. Above that, I keep the majority of my sanding stuff here. So I've got my palm sander, um, air, air palm sander. I use that constantly for, for finishing and the various papers that go with other things in the shop. I've got my little belt sander. I call this Mighty Might. This little tiny thing is extremely powerful <laughs> and I've, I've had it forever and it's a fantastic machine. I don't use it much, but uh, when you need to take a lot of material off quickly, I use this little guy. Next to that, I've got my Makita wire brushing machine. I do this, I use this a lot. We do a lot of wire brush finishes today. So if I'm not doing it by hand with a hand wire brush, uh, large surfaces, I use this machine as well. This is my six inch orbital. I use this to initially sand my pieces. So like the rougher stuff that I'm doing, I, I initially sand it with this and then I'll go to the fine grits with my uh, air orbital. This thing is super precise. I love it. Fantastic tool. 
Um, I keep my vacuum wand next to it. Um, these are studio lights that I use for when I'm filming um, in darker shots. I keep them here on the side. Um, this is my door that goes out uh, outside. I come in and out through there mostly. And I've got this corner that I decided, well, why waste the, why waste the space? And I put a few shelves on here um, just again to take advantage of every square foot that's in here. And uh, I keep various uh, screws, uh, drill bit tips, um, spade bits, some batteries, tape, all kinds of odds and ends, bags, um, black nitrile gloves for, uh, for when I'm painting, uh, spraying, and a lot of the cleaning equipment for the guns I keep up here as well. Um, again, it's just a, a great nook to get stuff out of the way. Um, this is a vacuum that I used in the flooring industry um, for the, the sanding edgers that we use um, in the industry. It's an extremely high suction vacuum for very fine particulate. Um, it has two filters in it and I, I have you know two of these. I absolutely love this vacuum. Unfortunately, it's just to the flooring industry so you're not gonna find this everywhere but I happen to still have them. And um, I use it in the shop constantly. I'm a neat freak. So, uh, you know, every time that I am uh, cutting something on the saw and there's, you know, dust everywhere, I've got this thing always hooked up and I'm cleaning in between cuts constantly. So this is a great machine for that. And uh, I also have the hookup. I keep the hose for it underneath there. I also use it. It hooks up to all of my orbital sanders, um, uh, that the electric ones at least, so that you know, I'm really dust conscious. I try to keep everything as, as dust free as I can. And, uh, and this is the great machine to, to carry that out for me. So, um, so yeah, that's what that, uh, that's for. And next to it, I've got the second most used machine, machine in the shop. And this is my, my joiner. It's a Grizzly. Uh, I bought it used a few years ago. It's an eight inch, two horsepower, 220 volt. And um, this machine is, uh, uh, is a beast. It's fantastic. Um, I wish, uh, you know, we'll see in the coming years. I, I'd like to get a little bigger one, like a 12 inch and, uh, and maybe a little bit longer of beds, but I, I, can't, I can't complain about this machine. Just like I said, I've outgrown it a little bit. And um, I started out with a small six inch and moved up to the eight and now it looks like it's time to get into like a 12 inch so eventually this might get swapped out but uh, for the time being it serves me well so that wraps it up for the machinery and everything that i that i use in the shop and my layout again it's just a simple two-car garage that i converted um, I, I put all the sheetrock up it didn't even have a ceiling at one time so i i built the ceiling i put in the floor and uh, I try to keep everything really comfortable. The floor is actually insulated underneath it with uh, foam. Uh, so there's a, a two inches of foam underneath this. Uh, it gets kind of cold in here. I've got electric heaters to, uh, to get it warm when I need to, but uh, I may be switching in here to a wood stove eventually and hel it'll help me burn the scraps that I produce in here and I can kind of get free heat. I have a ton of firewood out back, so uh, that may be going in place of here eventually in the future. I, I am, uh, again, trying to find a way to cut back on everything and, uh, you know, just maximize what I can. And the electric heat is getting expensive, I got to be honest. So that might be a change where I have a wood stove here in the future. So now I want to show you um, the spray booth. Uh, the way that I... I do this, like I said, is that once it's time to, um, to finish a project, I take all of the machines and I move them out into various areas of the shop, like I did with the build table. And I have, uh, I found this company that makes this uh, great curtain that, um, you know, you just roll out. It's a custom made curtain and I can create you know, this particular setup that I have is an, uh, it's a nine foot by 11 foot long spray booth. And I can fit pretty much, you know, anything that I make in here. If I need to eventually in the future, 
uh, all the track for it is, uh, it, it's all um, in segments, so you can buy other segments to it and make it longer if you need to, or wider, however it suits your needs. Um, this has been a real great addition to the shop. Um, if you look at the ceiling, I actually used to have an actual wall uh, set up here. You know, it was framed out con uh, sheetrock walls and I had two large doors here to come in and out of and it was fantastic for spraying because it was completely sealed. You know, you had you were in a, basically a room, but it just became too restrictive to have a wall here for me and it limited my abilities to move stuff around and get the, the flow going. So I, I, I took it out once I found, um, you know, this company. And this has been a real game changer in the shop for me now that, you know, I have a dual purpose corner where I have a spray booth and I can, you know, uh, still have a, a, a place to keep the machines or work with them uh, while I'm not, I'm not finishing. So, so this has been truly um, a godsend to, to have that. So that wraps it up um, uh, for this shop tour. Uh, like I said, there are many new things that are going to be coming in the, in the coming weeks, especially the new CNC router. I can't wait for that. There's going to be a ton of videos on that. I intend on showing everything from the unboxing all the way up through the setup. Um, I will be making my first, the first project that I make on it is going to be my shop logo, my shop sign. So uh, look for that in the coming videos. And uh, until then, uh, we'll see you on the next one.